to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The Word of God says, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. We want to welcome you today to our study about prayer. Today we're thinking about some things we need to understand, some presuppositions about prayer that, that help us to realize how valuable and important prayer is in the Christian's life. And so we're so glad that you've joined us today. Uh, if you don't have your Bible handy, if you don't have God's Word handy, we want you to take just a moment and locate that, go get it, have it ready, because we're going to look in the Word of God today as our authority on the subject of prayer. Today's lesson, of course, is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area, they'd love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a, you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about worship or the plan of salvation or the church you read about in the Bible, you'll find people there who'd be happy to sit down, study the Word of God, just open the Bible and see what it says. At the Lord's Church, you'll find people who love God, who love others and are concerned about the souls of men and women. And so stop by and visit the Lord's Church in your local hometown. And friend, we'd also love to help you in your desire to know God and His will here at the Gospel of Christ. If you'd like to have a copy of this series of lessons on prayer, we'll make that available to you free of charge, as well as any of our over 500 lessons that we have on the Old and New Testament, every book and a variety of topical lessons. They're all available to you free of charge. Go to our website thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can go to our media request form. You can uh, fill out that form, receive a digital download instantaneously, or if you need an audio CD or a DVD, we make those available to you as well. And friend, we just want to encourage you to, 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 to continue to study God's Word. Let it, be, not the opinions of men, but let it be the authority in all that we say and do. Also, check out the App Store for both the Android and Apple. You can find the Gospel of Christ app. It's a great way to study the Word of God as well. Today we're thinking about so, the, the beautiful, one of my favorite subjects in all the Bible is the subject of prayer. And today we're thinking about some things about prayer that if we understand these, it'll help us to realize just how valuable and just how important prayer is in my life and in yours. I want you to begin by thinking with me that the idea of prayer, it's grounded in the very nature of who God is and prayer tells us some things about God's nature. What does it suggest to us? What does it teach us? Prayer teaches the fact that God allows, makes an avenue for His children to communicate with Him, teaches us that God is a loving God who wants to hear from his children. Uh, listen to the words of 1 John chapter 4, and I, I want you to hear what the Bible says about God being a loving God who wants to hear from his children. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. The fact that God sent his son to die for us. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. John said, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can be called children of God. And then you're reminded of the beautiful words of 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh, listen to 1 John 4, verse 10. In this is love 
Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Friend, when I think about, about prayer, the fact that God has created a way through His Son, for me and you, for us to be in a relationship with Him and to communicate with Him. Friend, doesn't that tell you a lot about God's nature? God is a God who wants to show His love, who wants to communicate with us, and who wants us to communicate with Him. You know, prayer teaches us about the nature of God, that God, has a, that God is a caring nurturing God, and He wants to care for His creation. Uh, listen to 1 Peter 5, verse 7 again. Here's what I know about God. Cast all your cares upon Him. Now, I want you to notice this last part. He cares for you. I have heard your prayers. I've heard your, I've seen your tears. I have, I, I've heard your cries. I've seen your tears. I, I've heard your prayers. God will say to Hezekiah in Isaiah 38, verse 5, God knows what we need even before we ask it. Matthew 21, verse 22, not a hair falls from our head that God doesn't know it. God knows about, cares about the birds of the air, the, the, the fish. He cares about us. Friend, prayer suggests because through prayer we make our cares known to God and God cares for us, Prayer suggests, teaches us that the God we serve is a caring and nurturing God. He wants to help us along the way in this life. You know, prayer also declares that God is not far away. God is near. I, I want you to look in Genesis chapter 16 for just a moment. The fact that I can communicate with God and that my prayers take me to the very throne of God, Hebrews 4, 16, teaches that God is near. Listen to Genesis chapter 16, verse number 11. Notice what the Bible says. And the, this is God talking to, to Abraham and, and Sarah. Behold, you're a child. You shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael. Now watch this. Because the Lord has heard your affliction. Draw near to God. The Hebrew writer would say in Hebrews chapter 10, God is not far from every one of us. In Him we move and live and have our very being. Acts chapter 17, Paul would say to the idolaters in Athens, the fact that I can fall down on my knees, that I can pray, our Father who art in heaven, that my prayers are ushered before the throne of God, that God knows and cares. Friend, that declares that the nature of God is not one who is far, far away and has just kind of wound the world up and let it go. No, prayer is no further, God is no further away than the beautiful avenue of prayer. There's a beautiful passage in Psalm 34 that I want you to hear. This is such a beautiful idea. Verse number six, David says, or the psalmist says, this poor man cried out, watch this, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Have you ever felt like that? This old poor man, man, I, I mean, things sometimes get us down. We face the difficulties and challenges of life. This poor, poor man cried out to God and the Lord heard him and delivered him. Friend, that suggests that God's not far away living in some big castle all by himself and doesn't know. No. Prayer suggests God's near. Prayer teaches us about God, that he's able to address our needs. He is able to, listen to this, Ephesians 3, verse 20 and 21, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Hebrews 7, Verse 25, uh, Hebrews 2, verses 17 and 18, he's, Jesus is able to offer aid, help to those in their time of need. Romans 4, verse 21, God can help us with our needs. Friend, when I think about things prayer teaches me about God, it teaches me very clearly that the God I serve is able to address my needs and yours. But you know, when I think about all of this, I'm reminded what a great privilege prayer is. Prayer, you know, prayer is not, prayer is not a burden. 
Prayer is not a responsibility. Prayer is not something that you have to do this or you're going to go to hell. I think sometimes we take the wrong approach in looking at prayer. Prayer is a privilege for the child of God. I want you to open your Bible to the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. I want you to see from this passage, it's illustrated so beautifully how important prayer is. And I want you to hear what is said from the mouth of God's great servant here. Look with me in verse number 14. Solomon says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and heal their land. What a beautiful picture of the privilege. If my people will, if they'll turn, if they'll put me first, if they'll do me, what I tell them, I'll hear, I'll forgive. Remember 1 Peter 3, 12, the Lord's eyes are opened, his ears are attentive. He hears the prayers of his children. You see, that's a privilege that's for a Christian. Prayer is a privilege because it is something that is unique and special for God's children. This is not something that everybody in the world has. In fact, Scripture clearly says God does not hear the prayers of those who are living a life of abject sin and rebellion. John 9, 31, the blind man was right when he said, we know God does not hear the prayer of sinners. How do we know that? Psalm 66, 18, if I turn my ear away from hearing the law, God does not hear my prayer. Proverbs 28, verse 9 says the exact same thing. Now, friend, I'm not saying that someone who's trying to seek God, someone who's looking for truth, someone who has a good heart but maybe hasn't found that truth, that God is not going to hear that person's prayer to know His will and find opportunity for them to be saved. But if a person is living in abject will to the will, an abj abject uh, rebellion to the will of God, living in sin, doesn't care about God, but every now and then they'd like to pray to, it's not how it works. Prayer is a Christian privilege. And my friend, it is indeed a privilege for the child of God. But think about this for a moment. As a Christian, I have the benefit that I can, I can pray our Father who art in heaven and the creator of the universe, the God who spoke and everything came into existence, the God who loved us so much he sent his own son, the same God who worked the multiplicity of plagues throughout the book of Exodus, who worked the miracles through his son and through the disciples in the New Testament. He's promised to care for me and you. And he says to us, just cast your cares upon me. I care for you. What a great privilege prayer is. But friend, I also want you to realize that prayer is irreplaceable. Prayer, prayer cannot be replaced by other good things in your life. You see, the blessings afforded by prayer, those cannot be replaced by good living alone. I, I think sometimes we think, if I live right, do right, do as I should, I don't need to pray. Or maybe prayer is not as important in my life as it is in somebody who's... Well, not, that's just not true. Prayer cannot be replaced by good living alone. You need good living and prayer. The Bible says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man overcomes much. Not good living. Prayer is involved in that as well. The benefits of a, a prayer life, they can't be substituted by all the Bible study in the world. Friend, don't get me wrong. I'm all for good living. We believe and we teach because the Scripture does that we ought to study to show ourselves approved unto God. But friend, you, you can't replace prayer by all the Bible study in the world. You, you could study till the Lord's comes. And if you don't pray, you're missing out as a Christian. Prayer cannot be replaced by preaching. Preaching the gospel is important. God chose the foolishness of preaching to save. And, and you can do a lot of preaching. You can listen to a lot of preaching. But if you're not praying, you're missing out. And friend, the prayers of others 
cannot replace your need to pray. Paul would often say, pray for me. And I'm thankful to God for every person who prays for other people. I'm thankful to God for every person who's prayed for me. But you can't replace prayer life personally by others praying for you as well. You need to pray in your own life and you need to know that God will help you with that as well. And what else do we know about prayer? Prayer is a necessity because it's a means of accomplishing. It's a means through which as Christians pray, as churches pray, as people in societies pray, it is a means through which God's will upon earth can indeed be accomplished. I want you to listen to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I want you to listen to verses 4 and 5 here. Think about the will of God and think about prayer. Paul says, God desires all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus himself. And so God's will needs to be accomplished. He wants all men to be saved. What about when we live um, in, in, in the midst of evil governments, evil people? How is God's will going to be accomplished in all of that? Back up a couple of verses with me. Look in 1 Timothy 2, beginning in verse 1. Paul says, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved. God's will. The gospel, uh, Matthew 9, 36 through 38. Jesus, he looks out on that multitude and they're like sheep without a shepherd. And then he turns to his disciples and said, truly, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Pray the Lord of hosts. He'll send out laborers into his field or his harvest. The accomplishing of God's will. Uh, uh, the gospel being sent into various places. God's plan, His power through His Word and salvation, that working in various governments and places. For in prayer is a necessity because it is an avenue through which the will of God, doors are open, hearts are softened, ways are given, means are afforded, where men and women can preach God's will, the gospel. You know, prayer is also a necessity because God said to do it. What makes prayer important? Because God told me to. Think about what Jesus said. Prayer. Listen. The Bible is how God communicates with me. God spoke in His divine word. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. Prayer is how I communicate with God. And Jesus taught His disciples, pray. There's the command. Pray, our Father who art in heaven. Prayer is, it's God's method of conferring man's needs upon him. Listen to the word Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, verse number 9. The Bible says, as Jesus has already told his disciples about prayer, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened unto you. And so as we think about the idea of prayer. Let's realize it's a necessity because that's how ways, doors, means are opened for God's will to be accomplished. And it's a necessity because God told me to. That's how God confers His blessings upon His people. But you know, when I think about prayer, another thing we need to know about prayer is that prayer has to be learned. Someone doesn't just wake up one day. You're not just endowed with the knowledge of prayer. Prayer is, like many things, like most things, a learned trait. Listen to this statement and see if this isn't taught. Luke chapter 11, verse number 1. They said, Lord, teach us. They had heard John, they had heard Jesus pray, and they said to him, we want to do that. Lord, teach us to pray. I've got to be taught from the Scripture, from God, from the examples I see in the Bible, 
of how to pray. Well, how do you learn how to pray correctly? L let me suggest several ways. Prayer can be learned by listening to the prayers of others. By listening to the prayers we find in the Bible, I learn how to pray. John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for himself. He prayed for his immediate followers, and he prayed for all who would believe in him through his name, through their, all who would be his followers through the teaching. Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus taught his disciples, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. And he goes on to pray about a multiplicity of things there, but he needed his disciples to hear, to see an example of prayer so they could be taught to pray. I, I learned that prayer is not always, doesn't always have to be real wordy and long. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 4, before Nehemiah goes into Xerxes, he's the king bearer, he, he's going to try to help God's people. He needs God's help before he goes into the, to the king, and he just prays a short prayer in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 4. I learned from prayers like those of, of Ezra in Ezra 9 and 10 where he pours out his heart to God for the people and their sin. I learned from David, like in Psalm 51, how I've got to be contrite and broken in heart before I can pray to God. And so we learn to pray by hearing, by seeing the prayers, by reading about the prayers of others. How else do we learn to pray? Prayer can be learned through Scripture. Luke 11, 1, teach us to pray. We're going to deal with the idea of, in another lesson, of some things that God has taught us specifically to pray for in the Bible. And by this we mean, when I get out my concordance or I, I read through my Bible and I learn God says here, we ought to pray for this, ought to pray for kings and all in authority. I need to remember that's something I want to put on my prayer list to pray for. And so what specifically does Scripture teach us to pray for. And then, my friend, prayer is certainly trained by experience. The more a person prays, the better you become at that, the easier it gets, the more comfortable you are talking to God. Hebrews 5, verses 12 through 14, Paul says that we learn, we, have our, we ought to be trained by experience. To, to, to be teachers and to do the things we ought to do, but some had gone backward instead of forward. By doing, we learn and we're trained in the avenue of prayer. And then finally, my friend, let me mention just briefly for you some of the mechanics of prayer, some of the things, some of the ingredients that are necessary for prayer to be what God wants it to be and for it to work as God designed it to. What do we know are some definite specifics about prayer? Prayer should be made in Jesus' name. I want you to look at two passages with me. When I pray, I'm praying by the authority, I'm praying by the power, and I'm praying through Jesus as our mediator. Look in your Bible in John chapter 14, verse number 14. Jesus said, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Turn over to John chapter 16, verse number 23. Jesus said, And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will do it. And so when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name. And friend, that's not just some magic talisman, some magic words that you say. What does it mean to pray in Jesus' name? In the Bible, a person's name Rep represents their authority. Acts 4 verse 7, they question the disciples, by what power or by what name have you done these things? To do something by someone's name means by their power or their authority. There is one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus himself. He is our mediator, and by his power and his authority as the Son of God at the right hand of God, we approach God in prayer. And so we pray through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How else do we pray? We pray in reverence. The Bible says, happy is the man 
who is always reverent. Reverent means we, we honor and we respect and we recognize who we're talking to. We are talking to the Almighty God, the, 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 the Father of our spirits, the Creator of this universe. This is why Jesus prayed, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, respected, reverent, holy. This is, a, this, this is serious. Holy is the name of God. It's reverence that we ought to approach God with in prayer. We need to play, pray at times in a quiet place, Jesus taught us. Matthew 6, verse 6, Jesus said, Go into your inner room, shut the door. When you close the door, pray to your Father in heaven, Father in secret. He'll bless you openly. Mark 1, verse 30, 35, Jesus departed into a solitary place and there prayed. You know, when we can think, I'm not saying you can't pray in other situations as well, but the best prayer is probably going to be in the quietness. When I can minimize the, the sound, the rat race, the difficulties of life, Another mechanic of prayer is we need to make prayer a regular part of our daily routine. Psalm 55, 17, morning, evening, and night. Uh, morning, noon, and at night I will cry unto thee. Daniel 6, verse 10, Daniel prayed three times with his window open toward Jerusalem as was his custom from early days. Daniel had a good habit a set time he was going to pray to God. And I'm not saying it ought to be rote and mindless and, hey, it's noon and the clock buzzes, so I got, no. But there ought to be regular times of prayer in our life. And of course, for prayer to work, it has to be according to the will of God. 1 John 5, verse 14. And so today we've thought about the idea of prayer, some things that govern and some things that are important to prayer. We hope you'll join us next time as we're going to think about more to make our prayer life, to, to help our prayer life be the best that it can be to attain the power and the care of God as God wants us to. And so join us next time as we think more on the subject of prayer. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.